Fritz Nelson here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and I am standing here with Sridhar Ramaswamy, who is with NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA announced uh, the Tegra 3 platform well over a year ago, uh, and um, back in, I think, September, October, start, we started to see some tablet announcements with the Tegra 3, which is the quad-core processor from NVIDIA at this show. Here in Barcelona, we had several phones, I think five phones, coming out with the Tegra 3 platform. This is the first and only quad-core processor available today. And uh, we're going to see some demonstrations of, of some technology. But um, So five phone, new phones at this show? Yeah, we are really excited about it. Uh, the HTC One, the LG Optimus 4X HD, the ZT Era, ZT Mimosa the Fujitsu quad-core phone, uh, are, we are very excited about that. In addition to phone, several tablets were also announced. And you mentioned that Tegra 3 is the only quad-core processor. It's not only a quad-core processor, it's the only processor that has this 4 plus 1 architecture. Yeah, so let's talk about the, the one is, is a fifth core, if you will, and it, exactly. it's for battery saving. How does that work? So basically how it works is uh, we would use the four uh, main cores to you know, perform you know, high workload tasks like gaming, web browsing, uh, uh, stuff like that. And when you're not doing anything on your tablet, let's say you're just doing background things like email, or if you're just playing video or listening to audio, we would turn off these high performance cores and just run on this battery saving core to deliver like amazing battery life. It's interesting because of the first thing I, I thought of and a lot of people I think think of when they hear quad cores is going to suck battery life. And not only is this fifth core helping with that, the four cores kind of work together to do that too. How does that work? Exactly. You get the best of both worlds. Like when you're not doing anything, we would use the battery saver core to like deliver great battery life. And let's say you kick off a game, we would shut off the battery saver core and go to the main core. And based on the workload, we would either use one, two, three, or four cores and to deliver great performance. And uh, to your point, uh, Compared to like older generation dual core tablets, Tegra based tablets, uh, reviews have shown that the Transformer Prime, which is a Tegra 3 tablet, uh, battery life is much higher compared to dual core tablets. Okay, so let's stop talking about battery savings and get to the real fun, which is that this thing just screams. It's four yeah. cores, it's uh -huh. really fast. And we're going to see a couple of demos here. Um, and I think what we have behind us is Sonic Hedgehog 4, and it's running on the Asus. Transformer Prime, which is a kind of a tablet ultrabook combo running Android, mm -hmm. and um, it, you know, what what are we seeing here in this game? So here you're seeing Sonic the Hedgehog for Episode Two. Uh, the developer obviously is very famous, Sega. Uh, this is a game that's going to be coming up in consoles, and it's also going to be available exclusively on Tegra 3 platform. Uh, we launched this uh, at MWC, uh, very excited about it. Uh, you can connect it to your big screen TV at home, hook up a game controller, sit back on your couch and enjoy this really great classic game with all modern textures like well, advanced graphics detail and like, you know, that kind of takes you back in time and gives you a great feeling. So what is the Tegra 3 platform allowing in this game that wasn't allowed before? So the Tegra 3 platform, like I said, has uh, four CPU cores and a GeForce class GPU, and this game is utilizing the CPU cores, you know, for artificial intelligence, you know, physics calculations, and the GPU cores to like render really rich uh, graphics visual. Now, if I were to play this game on, a, you know, a dual core machine, what what differences would I see? Uh, dual core machines may not have all the effects that are seen in the you know the version that has been optimized for Tegra 3. You may not get the detail and the you know visual effects that have been added to this game to take advantage of the Tegra 3 platform. Great. Okay. Well, we're going to see one more demo of another game that takes advantage of the Tegra 3 and uh, shows off the processing power. Okay. This is Keiichi from Innis and. Uh, your company has developed a game called Eden to Green. Do I have to do all the E's? You do, with four E's. <laughs> okay, and this is running on NVIDIA's Tegra 3, so we're going to kind of exercise the processor a little bit here, I imagine. Yes, that's right. Um, so yeah, this is running on uh, a Tegra 3 platform. Uh, this is the ASUS Transformer Pad 300. Um, and this, the game is, again, called Eat Into Green. This is a tower offense game. So everybody's familiar with tower defense games. But what we've kind of done, we've, we've added a couple of innovations here. So the first one, the big one, is that we've actually made tower defense turn-based. So usually turn-based games, you associate them with strategy games. But we've kind of packaged our game kind of 
as a turn-based tower defense game. So it makes it very easy to play. What you have to do is very simple. And uh, turn-based also gives us the advantage of having uh, the ability to do um, asynchronous multiplayer. So we actually support three-player cooperative multiplayer. Um, you can play all simultaneously, and it plays um, on multiple sessions as well. So you know, if you've ever played games like Words with Friends, you can have multiple sessions of, your, of multiple games with multiple friends going on all at the same time. So that's what's kind of cool about having a turn-based system uh, with this type of game. So the other uh, innovation is, again, you know, I mentioned that this was a tower offense game, is that, you know, you do the general placing of units and whatnot, but one of the goals of this game is actually, you know, you have this kind of patch of grass here, and what you want to do is you want to try to spread it all the way out until you get to this guy, this poor guy, he's kind of a tree that's been kind of enchained by the machines that have been taking over Eden. So what you want to try to do is like kind of spread the grass out until you reach him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place uh, what's called a resource unit here. There's a tulip over here. What happens, as you can see, is that the grass, ex you know, it grows and it expands. and expands the whole area of grass. And you want to continue to do this um, because the, areas, the surface area of grass will actually dictate how much energy you can use per turn. And the more energy you can use in one turn will dictate what, type, what types of units you can place as well as, you know, how cool the units are. So right now I've got about 250 units of energy. So I'm going to place a couple of these attack units here as dictated by these claw icons. So I'm going to place these guys here um, to kind of uh, de defend my grass against the machines here. I have a couple of those in my in my grass. Yes, I'm sure you do, and they, they actually uh, you know fight off your lawnmower too. So, <laughs> but what's interesting is these guys will actually start mowing your your grass if you let them in. So uh, again, you know the surface area of the grass kind of dictates um, how much. Uh, energy you can use for the next turn, so you want to make sure that they don't mow your grass as much. So here we, I've ended the turn, and now the machines are attacking, and now the, uh, the battles are going to basically resolve themselves. The battles here are kind of like uh, RPG type style battles, uh, so there's the notion of uh, attacking and defending, offense and defense. Uh, there's a quick attack and there's a critical attack as well. And all these units have uh, their specialties there. For example, these, these dandelions here, uh, they actually have double attacks. So they're very expensive to place, but they can actually attack twice. Um, and we've got like a, uh, a cactus here, and he's going to jump in here to rescue this guy. These are defensive units, and these guys will actually, within a certain radius, protect the units uh, within their radius. So they're very uh, nice to have to ensure that uh, your offensive units don't actually get any damage. Now, is there anything special here? I mean, this, this looks like a, a, actually a game I would like to play, but in terms of exercising the processor in ways that maybe other games don't. Yes, yeah, so um, again, this is uh, running on Tegra 3 right now, and we're able to really utilize uh, the platform to its fullest. So you can see, you know, I'm going to zoom back out here. We've got a lot of detail in this whole background, and you can see that the frame rate is not dropping at all. We're, us we, uh, we're utilizing four cores, uh, maximizing them. Uh, we've got two cores just to render the screen, one just to handle the animation and the placement of these units, and one just for the physics. So you can see that we're using all four cores to the maximum, and we've got all of these atmospheric effects that are really cool that we can only uh, do on this platform. You know, we've got the fire effects, we've got wind, uh, we've got dust particles, you know, we've got these shadows that are being dropped from the clouds above the sky, and, and you know, we've, we've just got all these atmosphere nice effects that uh, really help to bring the world of Eden alive. And also, you know, I can zoom all the way up here, and you can see that the, the, the texture resolution still maintains itself, you know, even at this zoom level. And you can also see that the models, they're very well detailed. You know, the enemy models, the, the player models, they're very well detailed, even at this zoom level. And this we can only do on this platform. I mean, get from this this close up all the way, you know, if I take it all the way back, you know, we can do this because of the Tegra platform. So it's a really great platform to develop on for that reason alone. So is this available now? No, this is going to be available in July, so. Okay, in the uh, Android marketplace? Android marketplace, as well as Tegra Zone. Okay, and, and if I wanted to run this on, you know, a lower processor NVIDIA uh, powered tablet, how will it look? 
Um, it will run, you won't get a lot of the atmospheric effects and you won't be able to zoom out as much. Um, we control the amount of like atmospheric effects as well as the detail in the models, uh, texture detail, um, as well as again, how far you can zoom out and how close you can zoom in as well. So uh, the more powerful system that you have, the more you can zoom out, which gives you a strategic advantage because you can kind of oversee, overlook the entire screen.